Come to find out they filled out his paperwork wrong and they stopped his benefits. So I just faxed over the school his paperwork. My ears been bothering him. Take some fexofenadine. Hey, uh, it's for allergies. I never have to take stuff for allergies. Sometimes I don't know if I'm really having a physical ailment or I'm having a spiritual attack. Because there's no reason for my ears to be bothering me the way that they are right now. If you ever get to a point where you're not sure whether what God wants from you, this whole situation with having to find a new house and our income fluctuating the way that it is, I don't know. I feel like God just wants them to be still and just wait for instructions. That's what I'm doing. Because it's like, I have been calling out from work a lot lately because I've been overwhelmed physically and mentally. And I could have sworn that I read that if you're forcing yourself to do something or you feel uncomfortable or it's bothering your spirit or making you ill, that that's not what God wants for you. So, if God doesn't want me to work as hard as I was working, then God also knows that that's going to affect my income. So then that also means that God is going to balance that situation. So, I'm walking on faith for real this time. Because I always said that, but then I always had such anxiety around everything. And I feel like that just manifested more anxiety. But this time I really do have 100% faith that everything is going to be okay. And I'm moving as such. Like I know that everything is going to work out. There's no reason for it not to. And as I go back in my mind and remember all the times I was in impossible situations and we made it through and it was always better than I could have expected. So I believe this is an exercise in faith. Like the universe is testing me, you know, how much are you ready for? Because what we're about to do takes a lot of strength and faith. You know, I want God to be proud of me. You know what I'm saying? Like I've made so many mistakes in my life and I want to make it right. So. Well, I got my first rude comment. Like, so I posted this short. I think it was, are your teenagers loud? Because I'm learning how to do shorts and we're just having fun with it, right? And then someone commented, they sell lip gloss at the store or something. Like, what? Okay, girl. It's so weird. Oh, mom, you told me that. You told me that. Oh, that's promises. So you have um, pray about something like that. Because you don't want negative people on your comments and in your face. We can get protected from something like that. My daughter was not happy. I laughed it off. She was not happy about it. And she's right. She said I need to pray to um, protect my channel. From you know negative. And by y'all talking, all perfect. she do is wear chapstick. Picked around y'all mouth about somebody. It's okay. My lips always look dry. Y'all leave it alone because y'all want us to be naked. Yes, we're not the ones. I mean, it's not okay, but it's just sad. I don't know. I would never do that to somebody. It's just different. It's weird. I don't know. It's just, it's just it's weird. So I guess doing this process is going to, I'm going to have an ego death because you have to learn how to not take yourself seriously. And I have to honestly thank, give a shout out, several shouts out first to Lady Blay. Lady Blay. And what I got from her is about just starting even before you're ready. Shout out to Just Jazzy for the video she did about what you need to start your channel because I wasn't sure what to use as far as edit editing and stuff. So 
me using Canva and iMovie and whatnot, I learned that from her. So thank you, Just Jazzy, and I'm, congratulations for moving out of New York. That's amazing, and I love you guys. Um, and Peach McIntyre, I learned from her, first of all, about how important, important consistency is. Um, and about how to handle haters. Um, so, well, she handles them her way, but she doesn't take herself too seriously. And that's what I learned from her. A big bag, a big bag. <laughs> so, yeah, I had my first experience with a hater. And I told my kids, of course, I told them everything. I don't have friends, I don't have a man, I love the one, none of that. Uh, everything is my kids. I spend all my time with my kids. Um, for those of you who don't know, I actually lost custody of them for eight years. Um, because I was an addict for 20, so I've had them back for almost five years now. So I spend all of my time with them. If I'm not working, I'm with them and I'm in the house or I'm working on you know, art or teaching myself. My life center is centered around um, healing my trauma and theirs. I used to be a very aggressive, volatile person. And I have my own trauma. So it's like now, especially since their dad has passed, he passed in October. Um, he overdosed, but he also committed suicide by overdosing. So... Recovery is something that I hold dear, dear to my heart um, because all, a lot of my friends and associates and business partners are dead from overdoses. The other ones are dead from violence. We're from Baltimore. We moved out of Baltimore to um, a city in the mountains and everybody clowned me for doing that. They really clowned me for doing that. But um, now them same people one out of Baltimore too so it's like and I love my city don't get me wrong but my city don't have any type of love for me they eating everybody that's my skin color in that city so it was time to leave and go for my goals and you know make turn them dreams into goals and then come up with a plan to make it happen and that's what I did you know I looked back in my google drive the other day and I saw some footage from back when I was married and I was trying to start a YouTube channel back then. I don't even have any recollection of this because I was on drugs and severely depressed. And nobody would support me at that time. And they were telling me how, now this is my own, these are my other kids, my two older kids, not the ones over here. And because they were older teenagers at the time. So it was them, the two older boys and um, my ex-husband and they were just, not support me. They would always tell me that it wasn't the right time or I wasn't doing it the proper way. I needed to wait. And I don't know. I didn't. I, I just, I stopped. Like, I guess I stopped trying after a while. So fast forward to now and the fact that I'm actually doing something that used to just be a dream. It's crazy. And that's the process, right? You go from a dream to a goal to a plan, to a manifestation bars. So that's where I'm at right now. And that's why I'm always grateful, you feel me? Because I've really been in hell before. Being away from my kids is hell. That's hell for me. Being in active addiction is hell. That's hell to me. Not making music is hell. That's hell to me. And like, now I have my company. Masters of Fake Music used to be just a dream and it's real. So every little like or a share or a person that hears my music or someone that hears my blog, I built all of that, everything, every picture, every sentence written, every bar spit came from me. And I built this from nothing and I'm gonna build a legacy that I passed on to my kids. And so like, yeah, that's what this is about. It's not about so much bigger than somebody trying to leave a slick mouth ass comment. Regardless of what anybody ever says, it don't matter. Like, I've had people talk down to me my whole life and tell me what I'm not. It's all good, because that just means that you got your own issues that you haven't dealt with, and that sucks. But I'm not going to let it deter me, and it's, I'm not going to let it turn me into you being rude, hurting people. 
you know, I'm here to help the collective heal, help myself heal. I'm not here to make anything worse. So keep on hating, sis. Thanks for watching. So I finally got that email. And yeah, so we down to like the wire with finding a new place. So I called some friends to call in a favor. We'll see how that goes. She said her goons. 48 one hours. I, I'm so just I'm going to know where we'll be at. <laughs> No, but it's male. <gasps> that just means it's still coming. What if this is a UPS truck? You still see it? Oh, that's a UPS truck. That's a USPS truck. I was not talking about that. I was talking about the one. No, I know, but I'm just saying. I feel like it would be more powerful if it was still. That means something totally different. Yeah, I shake shift that. Man, the kids are watching Moana. We're taking an intermission. To get water and go to the bathroom. Raj is waiting for his iPhone. He got a free line and he broke his phone a long time ago and he was due for an upgrade. So he basically got a free, not a free phone, but like a phone he can make payment on, payments on. And he's going to use that to start his YouTube channel and he is so excited. So they're waiting. They, he's been tracking it all day. And so we're just waiting for. UPS to pull up. He's so excited yeah. about it too. Last time I seen him, he was fat. Nah, that he don't see for his phone. And we still have not made it for, through the rest of this movie. This is the longest intermission ever. <laughs> Fifty hour intermission. I'll see y'all tomorrow. <laughs> it's been a good day.